thanksgiving. The Bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. I'm just going to assume that we all entered into this place today with thanksgiving in our hearts, with joy in our minds, but can we enter into his courts with praise for a minute? Can we just give him a hand clap of praise? Because he's worthy. He's worthy of it all. Let's praise with the praise team. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are King. So let's start right.
How great is it, church, that the God that we serve, the one that sits high on the throne, would humble himself and come down into this place today with the common folks like us. How great is it that the God that we serve would come and want to be with us whenever we come together to give him praise. Think about that. The sovereign God, the one that created it all, the one that has the utmost power and authority in all this world would come down and want to be with us. Would come down and want to dwell in the presence of a sinful people. It's because he loves us, church. He wrapped himself in that sinful flesh and he died for us. And he's for each and every one of us that's here today. Today in Sunday school, we, we taught about Cain and Abel. One brought a good offering, Brother David. One, not so much. One was accepted and one was not. And I just want to ask you this morning as we come into the time for the offering, what are you going to bring to the table today? Are we going to be pleasing to God or are we not? Are we going to give with our whole heart or are we going to try to slide by? But I want to ask you this morning if you would all stand if you're not already. And we know the ways to give. We have Givelify and we have PayPal and we have all these other means. We can send checks in the mail to P.O. Box 477 here in New Madrid, Missouri, 63869 to the Riverbend Pentecostals. We can give the old-fashioned way in person. Gold pans are for tithing and the wood pans are for offering. 
But I would ask this morning, we, we keep hearing more and more reports of people being blessed, and it's just faith. It's faith believing that when we give, God gives back. It's faith believing that He's the God of multiplication, that whatever we give, He's going to multiply and give back. He's going to open the windows of heaven. He's going to pour out on us blessings that we can't even contain. But I want to ask you today if you would pray with me this morning the prayer. Upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given unto me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. And I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken, and I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received, my whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in and I am blessed going out and all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name, amen. Please come and give as the Lord has laid it on your heart.
Come on, lift your hands in the house this morning. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We magnify you, O oh God. You deserve it. You deserve our praise, O oh Lord, because of who you are. Holy, mighty, and powerful, Lord Jesus, for you. We thank you, Lord. We magnify you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's, it's amazing to me how, Brother David, you're sitting here singing the words to a song. And the Lord's still dealing with you in your mind. But I just felt to tell somebody in this place this morning that you can be sitting in your seat while the man of God is preaching and you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You don't have to walk up here. You don't have to do anything special. But when you repent of your sins and you open your mouth, God can fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost where you sit, Brother Robbie. Nothing special about it, but he loves you that much that in your place he can fill you with the gift of the Spirit. Amen. Also, he can fill you and heal you with any sickness that you got, any pain, any worry, any doubt, anything you're going through, he can take it from you in this place this morning. And if you believe that, let's just go to him in prayer in this place right now. God, I acknowledge you, and I give you honor, and I give you praise. I magnify you, God, because of who you are. God, you're able to do all things. God, a small thing or a great thing is nothing for you. God, you're able to bless. You're able to heal. You're able to strengthen. You're able to lift up, oh God, the brokenhearted. God, and you're able to do the mightiest thing of all. God, fill us with the gift of the Spirit, oh Lord. God, to bring us back into relationship with you. God, I don't know who it is, but I know, God, that you're able to do it in this place today. And I pray, God, that their heart will be right, that their mind will be right, that they will know you love them that much, oh God, to fill them with your Spirit, oh Lord. And I claim it right now in the name of Jesus Christ upon the authority of your word Lord that you will heal them today that you will touch their mind today and that you will fill them oh God with your spirit God we love you we praise you and we magnify you and we're going to give you honor we're going to give you glory because you are the king of kings and the Lord of lords and we thank you and we praise you Lord in this place let all the church just magnify him and thank him in this place this morning lift your voices and praise him because he is worthy
Jesus, you change everything. You've got something inside of you waiting to be loosed. The enemy wants to make sure everybody is shut down. But we have to allow the power of the Holy Ghost to flow through us. If you believe on me as the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. It's good to see everybody in church today. Let me make your way back to your seats. Appreciate your worship. The praise team once again did a great job. The Lord said, if you be ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. I don't ever want to be ashamed of him. I owe him everything. I'm not ashamed to say that if it hadn't been for the Lord who was on my side, the enemy would have beat me. He would have overtaken me and yes, even killed me. But the Lord came through. Please be seated. Jesus' friend Lazarus is sick, and then he dies. While he was sick, his sisters Martha and Mary, also friends of Jesus, they sent word and said to Jesus, He that loveth, he that you love, he that Jesus loves is sick. Now they didn't say, Come and heal him. But we know from their later comments that that's what they wanted. 
And I'd like just to interject this right now. Why don't we stop playing games with everybody? Ourselves and God included, Brother David, and just be as real with him as we know how to be. This is why I'm here. This is what I need. We can say that Lazarus is sick all day long, but I want him to know I'd like Lazarus to be healed. Amen? Jesus had to wait four days. He had to wait four days. It took four days for the agony of separation to set in. It took four days for the finality of loss to sink in. It took four days for hopelessness to establish itself. And excuse me for being rude, but it took four days for him to start to stink. After four days, Jesus shows up and they're very quick to let him know you're too late. I said they're very quick to let him know you're too late. If, if you would have been here, our brother would have lived. Jesus said unto her in John eleven twenty five, 25, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Resurrection means to bring back to life after you've been dead. He said, but I am also the life. I asked myself the question, what are you going to do after you've been resurrected? Or is it what you're going to do with this second chance you've been given? I'm preaching to some folks that society wrote you off. I'm preaching to some people that your family wrote you off. I'm preaching to some people that you didn't know hope was available for you, but I want you to let, to let you know you've been resurrected from the dead, and today's the day to make a decision with what you're going to do with what you've been given. Martha believes in the resurrection. Hang with me now. She believes in the resurrection and the hope that it offers for the future. But what about now? What about now? It is to that question that Jesus says, I am the resurrection. It is not simply a statement coming from him, but it is a powerful affirmation that he is the resurrection. It's not what's going to happen or what has happened, but when Jesus is in the room, he is I am. And whatever you need, whatever you're looking for, whatever you're missing, he has it. He has the answer. And faith has got to rise up in this room right now. And we realize that the creator is in this room. He doesn't have to duplicate it. He doesn't have to cook it up. He just speaks and it happens. Well, I wish I could preach a little bit this morning. We're going to work that Thanksgiving fat off of us in a minute. But I had too many days off in a row. But Jesus has moved into this room right now. He's been here all morning. The presence of the Lord is here. And he is here as the I am. Not the I was or the I will be. But he's here as the I am. And whatever you need in this room, hear me well right now. That is not hyperbole. It's a fact. By faith, whatever you need in this room, he brought it. He said, I am the resurrection. I will cause life to come back. I will restore. The destruction of that feeling you had for the last four days. The reason death hurts so bad is the finality of separation that it brings. And that's the only way our natural mind can view it is it's over. I'll never see him again. I'll never touch them again. I'll never smell them again. It's over. 
It is the finality of our loss that brings grief in a time of death. But Jesus said, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection and the life. It's a difference. There's a difference. Brother Richard, he doesn't say, I'm just going to bring you back, but I'm going to bring you back to life. There's a purpose for it. There's a reason for it. I don't resurrect. I don't resurrect to make the pain of loss go away. I resurrect with purpose for a new day. I resurrect with purpose for a new time, and I resurrect with purpose for a new ministry. It was in John 11 and 4. When Jesus heard that, he said, they told Jesus Lazarus is sick, and he said to his disciples, this sickness is not unto death. Plain, simple. It's not going to be the end. But for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. The purpose is not death. The purpose is to validate the work of God in and through Jesus Christ. He said, show me where you've laid him. And they led Jesus to the tomb and he instructed them to roll away the stone. That is simply to remove the barrier between the living and the dead. They hesitated and questioned him because by now he stinketh. Nevertheless, with obedience, they rolled away the stone and Jesus called out, Lazarus, come forth. And he came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes. Then was the true manifestation of their faith when Jesus said, loose him and let him go. And when they took away the, dra the grave clothes, it was Lazarus and he wasn't dead. He wasn't even sick and he sure enough didn't stink. Now I want to ask you a question. If Jesus knew that Lazarus wasn't going to die or that death wasn't going to win, he said the sickness is not going to be the end. But it had been for four days. But Jesus knows he's about to call him out of the tomb and he's going to live. But John eleven thirty five, 35, and so many people have memorized it over the years, said Jesus wept. The outcome was never in question. Jesus knew death had no power over his authority. Why did Jesus weep? The people that were watching said, oh my goodness, didn't he love him? Because we gauge our love for the departed over how hard we grieve them. And Jesus wept. And Sister Crystal, they said, my, how he loved him. That tells us that he wept. It wasn't just like a, a little sniffle. But Brother Jerry, I believe he was overwhelmed with emotion. But if Lazarus was coming out of the grave, you'd think that he would be excited. You would think that he would be, just wait till what happens. But no, Sister Maria, he stood at the tomb of Lazarus, the very setting where life will destroy death, and he wept. The end was never in doubt. It was four days that Jesus waited for this to happen, yet he weeps. I would submit for your thinking and for your revelation that Jesus wept at the price of the glory. He wept at what the glory cost. He wept at what they had to lose before they would acknowledge the glory of God in Jesus Christ. He wept at the agony of separation. He wept at the pain of Lazarus' sickness. 
He wept for the four days of, of loss, of agony, of pain that they had to endure. He wept at the limits of their faith. They believed God could heal the sick. But when the sick are dead and life is gone, there's a limit. He weeps because some will still not allow him to be glorified. He weeps that for some, when the emotional high of the resurrection is lost or fades, they'll go back to where they used to be. He weeps at what the glory cost. He weeps at what they had to go through before they would acknowledge the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. John chapter 12, verse number one, then Jesus six days before the Passover came to Bethany where Lazarus was that had been dead. Where Lazarus was which had been dead whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. And one of the first aspects of acknowledging the glory of God is you want to be with him. John 12 and 9, much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there. And they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. There's more to come into the house of God than to get your name on a board somewhere or to say we've got a certain number in the house of God. Let me tell you something, baby. Sometimes I've been going through a struggle and I need to show up in the house of God and I need to hear somebody say they've already made it through. I need to hear see somebody clap their hands who I know has been through some mess. I need to see somebody get on their feet who I know used to couldn't walk. I need to be encouraged in my faith by the brothers and sisters. Together we come and acknowledge the glory of God. I've got a word for somebody today. Verse 10, but the chief priest consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. They want to kill Lazarus, Brother Blake, because God raised him from the dead. And the only way to destroy what God has done is to make it look like they have power over it. Now, I want somebody in this room to hear me right now. Brother Jerry, we've been around this a while. Sister Maria, we've been around this a while. Brother David, we've been around this a while. We've seen people come and God fill them with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and they have an incredible experience with God that they speak in other tongues under the influence of the Holy Ghost, get baptized in Jesus' name, and you don't ever see them again. And the carnal mind says, they didn't have nothing really. They didn't really get it. I submit to you that it was the enemy's attempt to destroy your faith by killing Lazarus. I submit to you that the enemy begin to attack them and there's some folks in this room right now that we have recently baptized and you've recently been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and you wonder why that from that day you've been having to wade through mud just to live. You've been having to think about breathing. It's like effort has to come. Let me tell you something, honey. It's because the enemy wants to kill Lazarus. It's because the enemy wants to destroy the glory of God. I wish you'd stand up on your feet and lift up your head and your hands and say, I shall not die but live. I shall not die but live. Oh, come on, let's fill this place with glory. Let's fill this place with the glory of God. Woo! You understand? 
life is in the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I feel a little bit of Christmas Eve faith in here right now where you can't go to sleep because you know what's coming in the morning. I want somebody to know what you've been going through is simply the devil's fear of what God is doing in your life. Oh, there's a couple of ladies in this room right now that you want to have the victory and you want to claim the victory, but let me just tell you right now, there is no weapon that is formed against you uh, that shall prosper. Uh, the Lord is in control of the enemy and the Lord is in control of the victory. I want you to know you're not going to die from this. I just can't get over the hump. He did say, Brother Blake, I am the resurrection and the life. You know what that means, Brother David? That means he called me out of that grave. <laughs> he called me out of that grave, but he didn't leave me when he called me out. <laughs> He called me out of that grave, but he called me out to go with him. He called me out because he's going to stay with me. Say, well, I'm not feeling nothing, and I'm feeling this, and I'm feeling that. We done been learning in elements class. Your feelings will lie to you. That's when your faith kicks in, and you say, you know what? I've been to the water, and I've been baptized. My soul got happy, and I'm satisfied, and I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Please be seated. Hell wants you. Hell wants what you got. He just wants to destroy the glory. Because he wanted the glory of God, and that's what got him kicked out of heaven. But you think about what happens. Like Tuesday night. Tuesday night when we had a whole row of seats up here. And a whole lot of people, and I think Sister Stacy mentioned it, but a whole lot of people got up here and talked that some of us don't even know who they are. And they said, never felt love like I felt here. Never felt accepted like I felt here. Ladies and gentlemen, can I introduce you to the glory of God? Yeah. It ain't because we're anything. It's simply because we've been forgiven. It's because we've been healed. It's because we've been restored. It's because we've been cleaned. It's because we've made it. The opposition didn't kill me. The enemy couldn't kill me when he wanted to. He came against me, but he couldn't stop me because I'm still here. I'm still standing. I'm still praising God. You can't have my worship. You can't have my praise. You can't have my victory. The enemy's only got one course of action. That's to kill him. Because Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And if he kills Lazarus, the people will think wasn't nothing to him. Let me tell you something, baby. When it comes down to a conflict between heaven and hell, heaven's going to win every time. You might have been through three are four days of what feels like defeat. But I'm telling you right now, it's just a moment. His anger endureth but for a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for the night. But joy cometh uh, in the morning. Somebody needs to wake up. Uh, the sun is shining. Uh, you come through the night. Uh, you come through the gloom. You come through the despair. And the sun is coming up uh, in the morning. Well, I feel the Holy Ghost moving in this place right now. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. You're not defeated. You're not down. You're not almost done. You're 
you're not at the end of your rope, baby. You're just getting started. The devil is a liar and the father of it. I ain't even got to the good part yet. Look here in verse number 11. Because, this is why they want to kill Lazarus. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Before we leave this place, I'm, I'm about to cause some trouble, Brother Larry. I'm still keep that application open, Brother Terrence. <laughs> you better at least open your mouth one time before you walk out of this door and give glory to God. Oh, I don't think you got to do all of that to be saved. How is the enemy supposed to know you're saved? You know how the enemy knows I'm saved? Because when the spirit begins to move, or I begin to think a little bit about Jesus, I act like I'm saved. You know what it means when I've been defeated? I got my lips stuck out. I got my head down. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus uh, and all that he's done for me, uh, my soul cries out, uh, hallelujah. Sister Sheila, what do you think the devil does when he's done unloaded everything he's got at somebody and they show up at the house of God and they act like they're winning? He don't know what to do about you. He doesn't know what to do about you. I've said this before. When you get a Timex, you get a Timex relationship with God. You know what that is? takes a licking and keeps on ticking. The enemy doesn't know what to do. That's why your praise is so important. They're listening, Brother Richard. The enemy's listening. Oh, come on now. You young people, you listen to me right now. You get something, you get a hold of something with God. You don't have to be intimidated or afraid or uncertain or self-conscious another day the rest of your life. That's right. That's right. They might not do it publicly, but your friends will come to you on the slick and they'll say, pray for me. I want what you got. Pray for me. I need some help. Understand right now, the enemy can't have our young people. The enemy can't have our kids. If you think they're gone, that's a lie from hell. Please be seated. Because that by reason of him, him is Lazarus. Everybody don't know Jesus. But they know you. Everybody don't have a connection with Jesus yet. Everybody wasn't at the tomb, Brother Terrence. But they knew Lazarus. They was at his funeral. They might have helped roll the stone. And you know what? They went on about their business. They went to work the next morning. They kept on living their life. They've been doing it for four days. Everybody knows who Lazarus is. That's Mary and Martha's brother who died. And God raised him up. You think what God's done for you is not important? They're going to connect with you before they connect with him. Because they're going to say, I don't know about all that, and I don't know about all that, and I don't know about all that. But what I do know is that little boy, David Cowart, 
He had every reason in the world to get bitter and to get angry, but when he was about 12 years old and his daddy had left him and it was just him and his mama, he showed up at the house of God and God filled him with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and he proved you can make it. You can overcome. You can be delivered. Come on now, when I look at Larry Bobo, I see a young man that was 19, 20 years old. Please be seated. He was getting some opportunities to preach at some bigger places. He was preaching some revivals uh, and the enemy came in and, and broke his life up. And somebody told him, you can't ever be nothing for God again. So in hopelessness and despondency, he decided I'm just gonna go off the cliff. I'm done. But he was fishing one day and a preacher came by and started talking to him. And the Lord sent somebody to him at Walmart. And the next thing you know, you know what? When I look at Larry Bobo, I see hope. That's right. That's right. That's right. I don't know a whole lot about Jesus, but I see what God's done in his life. He was dead, but now he lives. He was dead. But he came out of the grave. Please be seated. Because that by reason of him, many of the Jews went away. From what? They went away from tradition. They went away from glorifying the Pharisees and Sadducees. They went away, are you ready? They went away from viewing God through somebody else's connection and relationship and they got a hook up from heaven themselves. And they believed on Jesus for themselves, rejoicing together, experiencing it up close and personal for themselves. The enemy wants to kill you. There's somebody in here, one person in particular, I know this for a fact, you've already been wondering if you're gonna stick it out or not. Ain't nobody told me but the Holy Ghost did. And when I stepped over to the other side right before church, the Holy Ghost said, this word's for her. It's not Miss Jane this time. <laughs> Though it could be, it could be, but got an experience with God and it seemed like everything was going to be all right, but then it wasn't. Yeah. Oh, Lazarus, think about it, Brother Richard. He had to start hiding. Start leaving. You know what? It wasn't so bad in the tomb. No, he had to keep living, Brother David, because the glory of God was manifest in his life. And what was done in his life testified at the power of Jesus Christ. You think the Lord's going to let you go out that cheap? You think the Lord's going to let you go out that weak? You think the Lord has given the devil that much power? I say no, a thousand times no. And I pray that your faith begins to rise up even right now. And you declare, I'm not dying, but living. That's right. I'm wrapping it up. Come to the music. For real. The other day, The other day I heard somebody say, somebody that used to come to church but doesn't anymore because there ain't nothing but hypocrites here. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's such a stinking lie. All that's here, Sister Leanne, is a bunch of people on their way to Jerusalem Amen. who walking before the Lord. Sister Maria, we're walking before the Lord until we walk with the Lord. And they said, here's what they said about somebody that the Lord's really doing a good work in. He ain't all he's cracked up to be. Now, my first thought was go punch him. I'm just telling you how it is. You're messing with my family. 
But then I realized something. Cracked up to who? You know what I say now? He ain't all he's cracked up to me. You're right. In the opinion of man. But he's exactly who he's supposed to be in the opinion of God. Amen. To that I say, he's not all he's cracked up to be. But he is. Oh, I don't think you heard me. You know what? I ceased to be about GL. And I started being about Jesus Christ. And let me tell you something. I'm not where I'm going, Brother Jerry. But I promise you, I ain't where I've been either. I ain't made it yet, but I'm on my way. Stand with me. The Bible says in Romans 3 and 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned and come short. I couldn't reach it because of sin. I didn't give Sister Heidi this, but Ephesians 2 and 1 says, and you have he quickened. That word quickened means resurrected. Who were dead in trespasses and sins. One definition of glory. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. One definition of glory is the exhibition of the excellence of God. The exhibition. You know what that means, Brother Walter? I can see it. The excellency of of God. Now when that scripture sinks in, or when that concept sinks in, I will be delivered, set free, resurrected from the approval of man. And delivered into the approval of God. Because when he showed up at my tomb, that was his idea. Everybody else had decided it was over. But he showed up at my tomb. It was his idea to say, GL, come out of that grave. It was his idea. So understand this, I'm living on the mercies of God. I shouldn't even be here. I'm not here by my own talent or ability. I'm here because the Lord showed up at my tomb one day and said, roll away the stone. No, we can't do that. By now he's stinking. Where is the glory of God? Where is the exhibition of his excellence? I know where it's at. It's in me. I know the hand of the Lord is on my life. I don't need that anybody to tell me that. Because I know what he did for me. I know what he brought me from. Say, G.O., you ain't been that bad. You don't know what I've been. Because I like darkness because my deeds were evil. Did it on the slick. But he knew. And you know something, Brother Larry? Not one thing I did wrong intimidated him. Because he said, I am the resurrection and the life. I'm going to bring you out, and I brought you out for a purpose. He ain't done with me yet. But what he did, he did for his glory. See, they want to kill Lazarus, but that's, that's not going to do anything because you know what? You can kill me, but the glory lives. Wow. 
You got it wrong, enemy. You got it wrong. Lazarus didn't live for the glory of himself. He lived because of the glory of God. The purpose for his resurrection was that God might be glorified. By reason of him, many went away and believed on Jesus Christ. But somewhere in there, there's a segue because you can't connect with Lazarus very long until Lazarus says, I was dead. I mean, I appreciate you coming to see me, but I didn't have nothing to do with this. I live because of the will of God. I live because God said he wasn't done with me yet. So we don't have no problem with the power of the Holy Ghost and the resurrection. Baby, you better be careful following me. I think you're in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> he said, I'm the resurrection and the life. Now, I ain't putting nobody on the spot. But I'm telling you, there are two people in here. One of you hurt your faith when everything didn't turn perfect after God filled you with the Holy Ghost. And it felt like you were in the enemy's crosshairs. That ain't nothing new. But the Holy Ghost sent me to tell you today, he's not done with you and you don't die until he says it's time. The second one, you ain't been able to get over the hump. You get right there and you can't quite get over the hump. A lot of loose ends flopping around. And the Lord came today to tell you, just hold on. It'll all make sense. And everything will go where it's supposed to go. But I didn't deliver you for the enemy to be able to destroy you whenever he got ready. I didn't deliver you so you could be a pawn in a game between heaven and hell. I delivered you because you've got purpose. And I delivered you, but that wasn't my greatest miracle. I delivered you so I could show you my glory. I delivered you so I could show others my glory through you. So you need to just get out of your mind right now that the devil has any say in this. He has no say in what God does in your life. Brother Walter, faith needs to rise up in here right now in the Word of God. Faith in the Word of God needs to rise up right now. Right now. That this Word is for you. That this Word is for you. And you didn't come here today to have your obituary read. You came here today to find out that your story hasn't even been written yet. So I would, be, if you've got faith in the power of God to complete you, I would that you'd step out of your pew by faith, wherever you are. Come and stand around this front, kneel down, lift up your hands wherever you are, and let the resurrection and the life be glorified in you, saying, Come on, come on, come on. You heard the Lord speak to you. Blessing, honor, strength, and power. Yours alone now and forever. Love this world can never stop. There is come on, it ain't about nobody but you right now. Reaching down to touch the broken. Just made you believe it's almost Mercy over. Break, it's just getting started.
Jesus, in your name we rise, and the glory is yours, the glory is yours. Oh God, the glory is yours, the kingdom is come, and the battle is over. Jesus, in your name we rise, and the glory is yours, the glory is yours.
called your name? Aren't you glad he said, hey, come on out. It's time to live again. It's time to live again, Brother Blake. Praise God. Praise God. What a message, Brother GL. By reason of him. Amen. Amen. I like what I'm feeling right now. Praise God. Take heed to what Brother GL said this morning. Take heed to it. Apply it to your life. Praise God. You may be seated. I'm going to read the announcements and get ready to close here for a minute. Focus prayer tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. Everyone's welcome. We will be taking the senior ladies around town to see Christmas lights on Monday. I don't know what qualifies them as being senior, but it says senior ladies on the, on the deal. So December the 13th at 6 p.m. If you'd like to go see Sister Stacy so the church bus can pick you up. It's December the 13th at 6 o'clock to go around and look at the lights. Ladies, be looking for a special ornament for the annual ornament exchange. There will be an ugly Christmas sweater party on Sunday, December the 19th at 6 p.m. in the Family Center. Each couple or family is asked to bring a dip of some kind and the chips, crackers, etc. that goes with it. There will be a door prizing games and etc. that are played that night. Church cleaning this week. Team number six, the Esther House girls. This week, Christmas card drive for the nursing home residents. There's a box at the back of the church to drop the cards in. Uh, write a short message in it, sign at River Bend Pentecostals. These will be delivered to the nursing homes in New Madras, Scott, Mississippi, and Stoddard counties around the area. The deadline is today. Now, if you didn't bring a Christmas card, I believe Sister Amanda or a card, Sister Amanda has some, and you can see her and you can sign that and drop that in the box. I think that is such a good idea that those people that are there, they don't, a lot of them don't have families, Brother Billy. A lot of them are there by themselves, and I, I, any kind of encouragement that we can do speaks wonders. Uh, the Family Center will be in use Monday, December the 6th for the Section 4 Minister's Banquet. Uh, New Madrid Annual Christmas Parade is Saturday, December the 11th at 5 p.m., and there will be a short meeting at the front of the church after the service today, just right up here at the front. Uh, Brother Parkey will be preaching for us next Sunday on December the 5th. I'm looking forward to that. We would like to get the mailing address for each family in our church. So either text Sister Amanda at 573-521-8122 or let her know after church. Next Sunday, December the 5th, will be our secret sister drawing. Now, do we have any birthdays or anniversaries today? All right. Y'all bring your offerings right on up here and we'll sing to you in just a minute. Okay, 20th anniversary, which was on the 24th. 13th anniversary. Wow. Praise God. So, if you had an anniversary and you would stand up, we were going to sing happy anniversary. We got three of them. Praise God. All right. Don't look like we have any birthdays, but we got three anniversaries. A happy anniversary to you. A happy anniversary to you. May you feel Jesus near. If you got the bulletin today, there's a little funny in there, and us men can relate to this, okay? And I think it's I think it's kind of funny. The lady's standing there in front of the dresser, and she's combing her hair, and the man's standing in the door, Sister Michelle, and she he's looking at her. She said, I told you an hour ago that I'll be ready in a minute. <laughs> thought that thought that was good. Can you stand with me? A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth up the bones. So oh. Brother Blake, dismiss us in prayer this morning, brother.